Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I will uh, I will tell you how we build pipelines at scale, uh, and I will take two approaches to do that. I will first show you the Puppet approaches, which is more an uh, infrastructure uh, centric approach, and then we will just do the the same with pl just plugins. So I am. Julien Pivotto, I am uh, open source consultant at Inuits. We are a large open source company in Belgium. Uh, I love open source software for many years. I like DevOps. I try to follow the DevOps principles. And I am a Puppet user since 2011 and a Jenkins user since the same year. I also do some Ruby and Python because nowadays you cannot just do see that mean you have also to develop a bit. So in which it's a large open source consultancy company, uh, which uh, explains why we see a lot of different Jenkins instances at several customers. We work in four countries. We have customers all around the world. Uh, and we do both developments and systems administration. And we touch to a lot of domains. And the pipelines I will show you today are about uh, a Drupal-based access management system, which is basically uh, a big backend when you put all your videos and your assets. And then you have uh, front ends that can call a, a, a REST API to get the information. And we, we have a turnkey media Moza solution. So basically, we have a lot of Drupal sites to manage because each customer, each project we have is Drupal site as a front end to that back end, which explains why, why we needed a way to have a lot of different pipelines because for each environment, we, you will have at least one Drupal site, the back end, and then a lot of front, different front ends. But first, let's take a look at what is a pipeline. So a pipeline is just a chain of Jenkins jobs. Uh, it means that you run the job A, then the job B, the job C, and at the end, your application is delivered or deployed, it depends. And you know that uh, you, at the end, the package you get is, has been tested uh, uh, against several different uh, jobs. So a pipeline compared to uh, independent jobs allow you to make some separation between the task to reuse the job. So if you have a job that checked the syntax of PHP files, you can use it for your Drupal sites, for your different Symfony sites, for all kinds of PHP jobs. You have an overview of your test. So uh, if you, go to, you only want to, to see the style checks, you can go to the style job and you have only that, that graph is. And you know that if the last job succeeds, it's because all the jobs before are just succeeding too. So it's important to have a link between all these jobs and to also separate the different tasks so you don't have a fully bloated job. Uh, but a pipeline does not mean that all the jobs need to be in the same view. So you can organize your view to have a view of all the style checks a view where all the different uh, integration tests and stuff like that. So it does not mean that if you have a lot of pipelines, you will have unreadable views. But you can also have pipeline views. And that's an example of a pipeline. It is a really simple pipeline with the built pipeline plugin. So you have job A, job B, job C. And at the beginning of the pipeline, you have some parameters. And at the end, you see that the package has been deployed on a certain environment. What you can also do for some project when it's possible is the last job may contain promotions. So at the end, you can promote your jobs to actually deploy it or to actually uh, start another pipeline for another environment. So what can you put in your pipeline? Well, a lot of stuff from the checkout to the deployment, including the packaging, the, all the tests, the compilation, style check, syntax check, 
and everything you can think about, you can put that into a pipeline. Some pipelines will just be four or five jobs, but other pipelines will have uh, like 10, 12 jobs. It depends on of the kind of the projects and stuff like that. So a pipeline, yeah. Let's use pipelines. First, let's make a pipeline that will test and deploy our puppet code. Because, yeah, we, we don't want to just do a git push to the puppet and just break all the production. Yeah, but then we will need a pipeline to, our, to deploy the puppet code to our development environment and a pipeline to deploy to our UAT environment. Yeah, okay. So now we have three pipelines that will deploy puppet codes. Maybe all the three pipelines are not the same exactly because we only want to do the style check on the development environment because it will be the same puppet code that will be deployed in production. Yeah, that depends. So we have our three pipelines for puppet. Then let's make a pipeline for the backend application, so the PHP website. So let's pull it from GitHub, do style checks, do all everything we want. Yeah, but we will need one in the development environment too. We will need another pipeline in the UAT environment. Yeah, okay. It's still maybe doable. Six pipelines to keep to keep in sync. Yeah. Okay, and now we have five customers. We will need five pipelines for five front end applications. Yeah, okay, but we also need five for your development environment and for your UAT environment. And each of this environment is a bit different because one of them is at data center A, the other at data center B. So you have a lot of pipelines. If you can't know, you have like 20 pipelines. And yeah, you need to scale them to be able to create them without, without just using the UI. But what did we try? How did we try to scale? So our first attempt, we just cloned the jobs in the UI. Yeah, it works if you have two pipelines. So if you then have 12 pipelines, okay, then you will start cloning, 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 and every time you have a human interaction, you can have mistakes. Because when you clone the job, you need to change the next job, the, a lot of things in the execution and stuff like that. Okay, so second attempt. Oh, we will just clone the, X, the job's XML files. We will make the directories, use grep, cp, sed. Yeah, but crappy brush script team is crappy. I mean, yeah, you do that once, it's okay. The next time you don't remember how the script worked, so cloning the jobs XML and just to using sed, cp, and grep does not really work. Mm, so we needed something else. And another problem with this approach is, OK, we need to change the pipelines because, I don't know, we decide that we do more PHP checks or stuff like that, then click, 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 yeah. 20 pipelines. When you need to do to work in the Jenkins UI for like 50 jobs, then it really becomes a pain. And then comes Puppet. So we are using Puppet all over the place. Uh, but what I will tell you works with all the alternatives. Puppet, Chef, CF Engine is the same fight. You modelize your infrastructure. You make reproducible platforms. Uh, it is fast, it is reliable, and you get disaster recovery for free. So if you need, you have something that goes wrong, you can pop up a new server, just provision it, and it will just work. So we use Puppet, we use infrastructure as code. So we, we know our infrastructure, everything is written down. Maybe in Puppet in Yehai it does not depend in data bags and stuff like that. We have the customer information, the Apache vhost. But yeah, usually you puppetize the OS installation, the application installation, the DB installation, all of that, it's logical that you puppetize them because that's what Puppet is for. 
but yeah, the application data, the actual data inside the application, do you puppetize them? So do you, do you want to really puppetize Jenkins jobs? Well, we did it because Jenkins is really part of the infrastructure. It's not a customer product, it's not anything like that. It is important, it is a brick of the infrastructure, like the uh, database server is important, like Jenkins is important, and we need to be able to pop up a new, a new Jenkins when needed. So we tried to puppetize the Jenkins jobs. So how did we do that? So we used the Jenkins upstream puppet module, which is uh, developed by the Jenkins team. Uh, and we created a second job calling, called Jenkins job module. Uh, I will not go in details in, into the puppet stuff. I will just show you the overview and explain you so you can translate it to a favorite configuration management system. So that Jenkins job module, it's difficult to share because it will contain information about the environments, if it will contain the jobs templates, and who knows that we don't use the same jobs. Uh, and it's mainly templates. So basically, it will just, the, the main part of it will be the templates of the different jobs. So we have the manifest. That's where you define classes and uh, other stuff in Puppet. So I will not go into the details, but the important is that we have a separation between the job, the definition of a job, and the definition of, uh, of a pipeline. So a pipeline, uh, like I said, is just a job that, star that starts after another job. And we also manage, uh, service.pp manage the restart, the reloading of the Jenkins configuration. So a job, what do you need? To, uh, what is really a job? A job in Jenkins is just a directory with a configuration file. That's a job in Jenkins. So you can uh, add a lot of arguments to your template, the project name, the next jobs, and then you can decide to add the job to a view. So it's not just creating new jobs that we are doing here. We are creating a job and we are specifically adding it to a view. <coughs> you have the service.pp. Service.pp just means that uh, you, you will restart the Jenkins service, may reload it to be honest. So you we use the command line tool of Jenkins, but the problem is that it makes Jenkins unavailable, and uh, it should not, because it should just act like when you click the reload configuration button, but actually it makes Jenkins unavailable, which is one of the problems we have, and I will tell you about that later. And then, more precisely, we have the pipeline.pp. And the pipeline.pp is where the magic happened. So uh, each pipeline we create is jobs, is different jobs. Uh, so you can create a pipeline definition. So uh, that's the start of the pipeline, the, uh, of the pipeline definition. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so you start by, to define your pipeline by just uh, adding the, the common parameters that you will pass to your job. So this is just common parameters. So when you will define the job after, it will just be three lines. In this case, we pass a Git repository, a customer name, a node to run the test, uh, a view, a package name we want to build and stuff like that. And all of that, we will uh, have the same for all the different, for all the different uh, pipelines, all the, all the different jobs. So this is from the backend pipeline, but we can have the same for the frontend pipeline, and then you can add a Symfony pipeline. And when you will add a new 
customer, when you will need a new pipeline, will just create a pipeline of type front end or back end, and it will uh, do the the job of it will add that on all the jobs. Then you have promotion. So promotion, it's like the job. So it's basically a reference in the config.xml plus a directory plus a configuration file. Uh, that's the promotion public, uh, plugin. I guess a lot of people use them. We use them a lot. And it's the same. So you pass a lot of uh, parameters to our promotions including the VLS doc root, for example, the package name. It depends if you really need promotions or not. It depends on your use case, obviously. Then you define your jobs. Once again, it's just puppet code, but what we do, we are still in the pipeline.pp. So in the pipeline.pp, which is a generic definition, you will say, I want a, f a checkout job, uh, that will trigger a syntax job, and then I want a syntax job. Here is the template, and I want the, the next job to do the uh, to check the style. Once again, we will just be able to reuse that, and each time you will add a new uh, a new customer, a new project in your puppet code, then it will just show up as a new job in your Jenkins environment. And then just another example where we decided to add a promotion, a parameter to our jobs that will just add some promotions. And once again, it's XML files. We are transform them into templates. And then we are just applying the templates on the Jenkins server. You can do that with a lot of different tools. I will tell you later why we, like, why we used that approach, of course. And then that's really the promotion. So a promotion basically it needs uh, a job, uh, a job name, but the job name is defined in the defaults. I showed you before. And then you can pass also parameters like you want a Debian repository, a target. It does not really matter. You can. What is important to see here is that we define the jobs, the promotion, and you will see later that we define a lot of a lot more in Puppet. And then there is another problem. Is the the next problem is the Jenkins uh, config uh, XML file. So the big XML file that you need to change if you want to add a view or stuff like that. That configuration file, yeah. We use OGAS to do that. OGAS is a tool uh, developed by Red Hat, I think, that can just edit XML file in place. So it means that you don't, you don't need to know the complete configuration of the XML to just modify it. The, the problem with that is that it becomes quite difficult. So in that case, it creates a, a dashboard view. But yeah, it's really difficult to do. And it works. It works really good. So it does what you want. But if the plugin change, if anything change, then it does not really uh, match your expectations. So that's the approach we have taken because yeah, the other approach, the other only approach we had to modify the views was to just uh, use Selenium to automate the creation of a view, but we did not want that. And also using uh, the REST API uh, was not an option because uh, we because we did not find I think at the when, when we did that, we did not find the the nice stuff to do that in the API. So, so we have our pipelines in Jenkins. So the first advantage is that it's easy to deploy a new pipeline. Uh, in a minute, I can have a new pipeline if I if I want with all the jobs set it up. Uh, even if it's a pipeline of two or 20 jobs, it does not really matter. In a few minutes, I just have my pipelines. And then I can define the pipelines in the same time as the applications. So what I, when I have a new customers, I add them in my Puppet manifest, or I just add them to my Yeha uh, config YAML files, and I add them. Puppet is the source of trust. So 
if I have an application, I want a pipeline. And if I, uh, and at the same level, I add the application, it will define the VOs, it will define the backups, it will define the monitoring, and everything will be in one place. If I want to delete uh, the customer, if I want to change a parameter, if I want to change them, any, anything, it will end up in a change of pipe, in pipelines, but also uh, in the backups and ev everything like that. Uh, sorry. It also brings you some tracking of the history of the of a pipeline. I mean in the XML. So some people just make backups of Jenkins, but a backup you run it once a day or stuff like that, or I have another alternative I will show you at the end, but you your puppet code you usually put it in kit or in anything that you can track their history. So you can see who made some change in the pipeline uh, and when and why. That's really important to know that if the pipeline has changed, it is for a good reason and not just because someone clicked the wrong button, for example. So you are less depending on the Jenkins UI to just change your pipelines. And then the other advantage is that you have a separate job for each project. So if you are looking for an artifact and you have only one job for all your different pipelines, then you will just need to look, okay, when did the last pipeline build that job? When, in, if I look for the test result for that job, for that job, yeah, okay, but this build is for the other customers, this one is for the third one. Yeah, you can still edit the build name, but having a separate job is more efficient, and also you can see uh, the graph is only for that project and not for all the project having a, a graph that doesn't mean anything. And then you can reuse the puppet template functionality. Uh, the main functionality we, re we reuse is uh, to include a template in another template. So we separate the XML and the scripts in uh, different files. So we know that uh, the XML part, we almost never touch it. It's quite generic. And then you have the uh, the templates which only contains the content of the build, so the, the different exec and stuff like that, and uh, also the content of the mails we sent. We have that in a separate template functionality. So we separate the per Jenkins configuration with the job configuration by itself. Then we can deploy a new Jenkins server in minutes with all the jobs already popped up which means that we can have a Jenkins, especially uh, for the testing, and a Jenkins for the production, which is really cool because when you want to upgrade Jenkins, when you want to update your plugins, you need a test bed. You need to know, will that break just all my builds? Will my builds still work? What do they change to that Git plugin? What do they change to that email notification plugin? So that is important. So you can have multiple plugins, and also you can have multiple Jenkins masters. So if you want to have uh, uh, to have a customer that can have access to a Jenkins instance, you can do that using that system. So keeping several Jenkins in sync is also important. And like everything is in Puppet, it will be deployed across your environments. And you, you make the change in test first, and in UIT, and in production if you want. That's really cool. And then you can puppetize more. So you can also puppetize the SSH keys, the Git configuration uh, in Puppet. So it means that you do not have to do uh, almost anything in the Jenkins interface. So you will have a fully a fully working uh, Jenkins instance really from the beginning to the end. And also if you don't want to create the databases in the jobs, if you don't, or, or if you will use an external uh, reverse proxy to access to your Jenkins test setup, or your Jenkins jobs uh, and stuff like that, then you will, be able to create the test databases, the VOSTs, etc. So 
Maybe not the database, because you may want the, the application to create them, but you will be able to create the, the users and everything you want, we'll be able to do it in Puppet next to your pipeline. So when you change, when a change of your pipeline implies a change in your infrastructure, you will do the same at the, at the same time. So that's the advantage we had uh, in setting up the pipelines in Puppet. But there is not only advantages. So the disadvantages, there are three major disadvantages. The first one is that you need to play with OBS and XML, and XML is not really done to be modified by hand. I, that's the feeling I have. So that, and also for the developers, it's not so easy compared to the, just the Jenkins UR when you click on the REST API when you just uh, use it. And it makes Jenkins unavailable on changes. That's a problem that we, st we still need to work around. I don't know if it's still the case now, but in the past, yeah, Jenkins is, pre is prepared to be working. Uh, do, not b do not move, yeah, and we are waiting like two minutes. So the reload command we have found is not really working as expected. And every small challenge ends up in Puppet. That's an advantage, but also a disadvantage. If you just make a typo in the XML file, then whoop, you will need to deploy your puppet code again. So that was the first approach. So uh, using Puppet to deploy uh, the pipelines like it was an Apache VOS, like it was anything related to your customer, to your application, just using plain bar Puppet to just abuse Jenkins. And then you have the second approach, which is more a, the Jenkins way of doing because it's more simple. It's, it will remove the, Jen, the puppet complexity. But the, you will still need to have the pipelines in sync. So if you decide to change the PHP test to test more modules, for example, you will need to still be able to do that for all the jobs at once. So you don't want to still have uh, the to still have the different uh, places to change that and the different jobs. You will need to minimize the human intervention. So you don't want that a guy is paid all the day to just modify the pipelines. You obviously want one location to change the jobs configuration. You also be able to speed up the pipeline. So uh, using the Jenkins plugins, yeah, it might be more fast to deploy, to just change in the UI that to uh, deploy the Puppet code. Actually, we deploy Puppet code in uh, 10 seconds, but still, uh, if you want to run a lot of tests and stuff like that, you can just speed up the pipeline by just using the plugins. You, uh, you just test that directly on the Jenkins server and or your test bed Jenkins server, of course. And then uh, you have the result immediately. And it does not restart Jenkins each time, which is one of the main reasons why we are now more taking that approach. So, the first plugin I will talk to you is the build flow plugin. So, the build flow plugin is made to design the pipelines. So, it will call different jobs, and it makes that for you it's Groovy scripts. So, Apparently, the Java community is using that a lot. I discovered it with the build flow plugin. And one of the main advantages compared to the, the just the build, the, the default pipeline, is that it can wrap jobs in parallel, but it's only one of the possibilities you can do with that. And you have the build flow plugin, but you have also a lot of other plugins that do the same, and you can substitute this one with the other build flow plugins. Uh, there are a lot of plugins that do exactly the same. I will just show you this one. So that's what you get at the end. So you have a job, and you it will run three jobs in parallel, and then it will continue the the pipeline. So the first obvious reason to use it is to speed up the pipeline, because if you need to wait for the syntax check to be able to run the link check and the respect check, and in this case, it's not really useful to wait for one 
to to be done until you can you start the other one. So that's the main advantage, but there is a lot of other functions. So that's the base of a Groovy script. So you you want to start a build, so you build the syntax, the lint, and that will create you a pipeline like this. But remember, it's groovy. Like it's groovy, you can add variables as job names. So if you want to have, uh, if you have a job per customer, then you can just have a special, uh, have a special uh, job name which contain a variable. This is important because when you start the pipeline with the the build flow plugin, you never know what the pipeline will look at the end. It can change each time depending on the project, depending on a lot of different stuff. So when the when it starts a pipeline, you cannot predict. Yeah, you sh you can predict, of course, but. Uh, you, you do not know th if you will have the same graph or not. If you have a simple uh, workflow like this, it will always be the same. But you can do if there is backend in the name of the, of the parameter, or if that parameter is too true, then I need to change uh, the way I build the software. So it allows you to create like dynamic pipelines. Then you have also function to run parallel jobs. So in parallel, I will build the syntax job, the lint job, the respect job. That's what I showed you. But you also have conditionals. So if I want to release it, it will deploy on the parameter deploy method that I have done. But if I want to release it, and I have said that I want it to be released with librarian puppet, then I will buy, I will start the build librarian. If I want to to uh, do a package, then it will start the package name, the package job. And then you can. Uh, so that's an example of a pipeline, yeah. And that you you then have built parameters. So I will build I will start the get some modules and I will pass it my name parameter and. Uh, my environment parameter too. So it's not limited, of course, to just launching environmental jobs. But you have a lot of other interesting stuff. So you have a retry function. So if you have a job that is failing because of a network cut or something like that, you can just say, OK, try, try to run this job twice or three times before saying that it's really failing. So if it fails, you will just try it again. You have a rescue function. So if the deployment job is not working, what can I do with my build flow plugin? I can say, if this job is failing, then launch this job, maybe to notify me, maybe to do whatever you want. In that case, the pipeline really becomes uh, dynamic, because even at the beginning of the pipeline, you do not know what it will look like at the end. So if the packaging job is failing, then I will maybe launch another packaging method to do the same job. Uh, the rescue function is is really uh, useful. Another uh, thing important in the build flow plugin is that if the pipeline is failing, then the first job will fail. So in traditional pipelines, the the only job that is failing is the la the, the the first job that is failing fails and point. But in that case, the job that launched the pipelines will just fail if any of the other jobs fail, unless you ask you, of course. But uh, So it is important. It is really a different point where you, when you need to look, where is this sub in the pipeline, or I, I need to look at the failed jobs to see if the pipeline has worked. Now, in this case, you have the first job that will tell you if the pipeline has succeeded or not. The second plugin I will tell you is the job generator. So it creates jobs on the fly. So it looks like a job, but it, when you create it, you say it's a job generator. So you will create a job generator. You will tell it, OK, I will give you a, param a special parameter customer, for example. And you will create me a build called 
syntax dash customer. And each time you will run that generator job with a different uh, customer name, it will create you a new Jenkins job. And it will also update it if needed. So that allows you to have different jobs with the same configuration, because each time you will run the customer syntax job, you will have run before the generate the customer build uh, job, which means that uh, at the beginning of the pipeline, you will not have all the jobs that you will that will be run because they will be created on the fly, and that's really a, 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 a cool plugin because you are really free to have one location to put your jobs. You have you can still use the UI and have ten ten ten. Uh, 10 times the same job. So it works with special parameters, but you can also define normal parameters that will not be interpreted. So uh, it's a very useful plugin. And when you combine both of them, you have the starting job with using the build flow plugin. It will call some jobs or some generators in parallel. And at the end, you have a nice pipeline uh, with unique jobs for your customer. Of course, all the jobs don't have to be unique, but if you have artifacts and stuff like that, then it's more practical to just have unique jobs. And the last plugin I will show you is the job config history plugin. It's just, it keeps track of the, of the changes in the jobs, and it is an alternative to the Puppet way of doing that will just keep all the templates in the Puppet tree and then it will just be uh, in the git history. Each time you will change your, jo your job, you will have uh, the job config history that will show you, okay? That is the difference between the two jobs. And still, still you will ne need to have backups of that, but at least if, so, if a job is failing and you want to see what has changed, wh why the, was it, is it failing now or, and before it was just fine, then you can just use the job config history plugin to see that. So we're already at the conclusion. The first conclusion is that that will not solve everything. Creating a lot of jobs will not just help you with the load of your check-in servers. But then you can think slaves, you can have several masters, you can have a lot of different things. SM pooling. So when you have 50 projects that pull your uh, Git repository, and no, your SM pooling is not made for scaling. So you can use the Garrett plugin, if you use Garrett, which is a very, very efficient plugin to do that. Or you can just trigger with a git hooks or stuff like that to just call the Jenkins API to launch jobs. The jobs are slow. Yeah. You still need to optimize your jobs. You can divide them. You can monitor them. You can launch, any, launch them in parallel if you want. But the more important is also you can monitor them. You can just use Graphite to track the duration of your job and to have an overview what does work, what does take time, what does not. So monitor your jobs. You can, you can see that it's slow, but if you can just measure it and show it and find what is wrong, then you, you are on the good way. Notification. Yeah, you will, be, you will need to be informed, so you will need to use XMPP, RIS emails, get rid, because the more different customers will have, the more different jobs you will have, you will need to get good information uh, in feedback. So you, just, you, you can use other things than just the plain bar mail. So you can, if Jenkins popping up in XMPP or IRC saying, hey, uh, the build is broken, please do something about it. So pipeline at scale, I've presented you two different approaches, one which is really at the application level and the other one at the infrastructure level. You, you can pick the one you prefer, if invent your own. That, and you don't need to, uh, you don't need to hesitate about the separation of the jobs. Separating jobs is fine. You don't need to have a different job for each uh, test you want, you want, but doing a clear separation is good. And then, uh, you, you will need to monitor your jobs and your pipelines because they are part of your infrastructure. Uh, you need to monitor your Jenkins server. You need to know how many jobs are running, how many threads are used. Uh, it's the same for your slaves. So thank you. Uh, thank you if you have any questions.